Uh, I have a question about, uh, you mentioned the guy with the asthma, and I, I know you probably had a private session with him, but how do you discern, or how can a person discern for themselves what the emotions are that need to be cleaned out with a given physical symptom, like uh, say if the guy had, had a session with you and he went home to tap on his asthma and maybe, uh, or something else, and didn't know necessarily what the bottled up emotions were. Okay, that's a good question. That's a very good question. The deal is, what I will do is have somebody come in and they share like with asthma, and it was actually a lady who had asthma. Um, she had seen me about four or five times before that, and we addressed specific issues. Issues of being nearly suffocated, issues of being uh, trapped and other abuses and several different events all tied together. Asthma, the physical pains, my belief is your physical pains express the emotional traumas. Okay, now if you look in asthma, asthma has a lot to it. And you go to childhood asthma and oftentimes they have the same basic feeling as being suffocated having no control, suffocated love, helplessness. There's all kinds of emotions behind it. I knew that, but at the day that she came in and said, okay, sure, cure my asthma, I said, okay, let's do it. One hour, asthma completely gone. We're talking about severe adult asthma. HEPA purifier in her car, inhalers. She had a specialized doctor. She, she couldn't drive by herself. Somebody always had to drive for her. Her life totally changed. That one session. Well, it built up to that session. I believe I had to clear all that stuff up. I believe, such as asthma, you have to go back. And I'm going to tell you this is what your homework assignment is. In your spiral notebook, the peace program, write down every emotional trauma in your life. Every event that's ever had a negative impact. Why do you do that? I'll tell you why. You went out to your car today, or this evening, and you drove here. You didn't wake up with this wonderful skill called driving today. Your driving skill, you go out to your car now, you just jump in and drive it. You don't even think about how to drive, do you? When you experience those events, those emotions attached to those experiences are put in your closet. Now the closet is there. Now you'll never want to go look in the closet, but the crazy thing is, while you're driving down the road, a song on the radio will play and something will fall out of that closet, hit you in the head, and all of a sudden you have this problem. The cool thing about memories of the past is this one, one, one key. The past is over. It's not real anymore. But this, write this down. <coughs> you got it. Memories buried alive never die. Memories buried alive never die. What does being buried alive mean? Buried alive means when it is alive, when you step back into that memory, oh shoot, grabs you. That means if it's inside you, now the cool thing is guys, it's all you now. You're not being abused by whoever it was. And if you go back to the memory and you keep replaying it, guess who the abuser is now? Yourself. Yourself. So this is yours. That's the cool thing. Now what happens is, how many of you know what hypnosis is? Hypnosis is a state of mind. You know, hypnosis has been going on all your life when you're sitting watching TV. Today, when you went back inside yourself and you were thinking about a problem that you were addressing, that's a form of hypnosis. It's a state. It's using your imagination and what you do when you go back to those memories and you jump into it and you feel as if it were real and you were a little five-year-old girl again or boy, that's hypnosis. The cool thing is you can break the trance. The tapping destroys the emotional state that you were in. You are so powerful. You are so powerful. You can create bad feelings like this as well as good. Whichever one you choose to practice, you get really good at I want you to release the past, build the positive states in your happy journal book. And that's what we're going to do next week. I'm going to walk you through a little bit of this. You're in control. In your peace program book, write down those issues, those events. 
If you want to lose weight, I want you to write down the things they said about you in weight. Those mean things they said about you. The things about your body, the things about how they teased you, or whatever it is. We've got to destroy the emotions attached to it. When you look at your body, what is it you say about yourself? What somebody else said about you? Write it down. We want to destroy those emotions in it, and we want to have 100% peace. And the moment you have peace in that, you really transform. If you really want to lose weight, I suggest not trying to lose weight. I suggest gaining personal power. Because I'm telling you, you could lose weight. And there are people who weigh the same weight you would like to weigh. And you know what? They're not any happier than you are. They really aren't. And you think you're going to get down there, you're going to be happy, I'm going to tell you something. It won't happen. Unless you change right here first. There are people who said, I've got down to that 150 pounds. I ate nothing but cabbage soup and, and starved myself. And I did all this. And when I got there, I was just as miserable there as I was before I started. I might as well eat and be fat and miserable. You have to change you first. That's what the program is all about. Personal power. Love yourself. And that's where it's all going to begin. All right, guys, I have a little handout. Any other questions with that? Any other questions? Now, this is, now we're going to do a lot of different things, and we're going to really address a lot of stuff. And we're going to hit hard and hit fast. Just a question. You said bring your favorite food. What if you don't have a favorite food? Okay, if you do not have a favorite food, I suggest bringing a food that you know that you eat that's probably not good for you. Anything with aspartame in it. If it's soda, bring soda. Uh, bring something. I mean, if it's... If you're, if you're using it as a comfort food, that's what I suggest. Or, see, some people may not have what you call a favorite food. You may not. You may have, and we may have to address programs that you use to eat when you're not hungry. Cleaning your plate, buffet, get your money's worth, and we will do that. There's got to be a program that's something going on. Or just something you eat commonly that you know that you probably eat too much of, you know. The grocery store, everything in the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs>